Hey guys, here we go again. Mm. Now, what's the purpose of a buffer? Oh yeah, it's to prevent the uh, pH from changing too much when maybe random or stray acid or base enter into the mixture. So let's do a little calculation on on what that would look like. How does the pH change if I add uh, an acid or base to a buffer? Start off with a, your usual buffer question. A buffer holds a certain number of moles of HA acid and a certain number of moles of A-, a minus, its conjugate base from a salt. Maybe it was sodium A minus, lithium A minus, or you know, whatever. The positive salt could, yeah, I don't want to make it ammonium, that can confuse things, but anyways, I get the salt in the water. K is this for the acid. What's the pH of the buffer? Now, you could probably do this based on the last video you watched. If you had the, the Ka, the anderson hasselbalch equation, tell you the pH pretty quickly. But what if I added 50 milliliters of 2 molar HCl to that? Hmm. Because isn't the purpose of a buffer to be able to consume or neutralize that and still keep a fairly relatively constant pH? And relatively and fairly are relative terms because pH is a power of 10. Uh, it's a tenfold scale. It's not a linear scale. It's a logarithmic scale. All right, so let's try this. I had, uh, yeah, this really helps to have the number of moles because if I know the number of moles of acid, I can predict how, how many moles it'll react with on, the, on this one or this one. So here's the way I do it. I say, here's my uh, acid in its conjugate base in equilibrium. I have 0.23, milli, 20, 0.23 moles of this acid, 0.17 moles of the base, um, and my Ka is this. I can easily find the pH of that buffer, but I didn't even bother right here, right now. But I want to think about adding 50 milliliters of 2 molar, 2.0, that's a decimal, 2.0 molar. 50 times 2 is 100 millimoles, or 0.1 moles of acid. And I'm going to add that. Which of these two would the acid react with this, or would the acid react with that? Well, I see a positive charge there. The H positive attracts a negative Lewis acid Lewis base. So guess what? This tenth of a mole of acid is going to react with this. So one way I write it, I can write it like this. I could say a tenth of a tenth of a mole of this is going to react with a tenth of a mole of that. And I could set up a table for that. I could say my original con acid in its conjugate base, but this A minus will be consumed to some degree. So I'm going to consume a tenth of a mole of this and make another tenth of a mole of this. So this goes down by a tenth of a mole. This goes up by a tenth of a mole. That's a little bit tricky. You know, I'm not even worried about this. I'm just saying if I added strong acid in the form of HCl, that's 0.1 moles of this, it's going to react with this all the way to make that. Initially, right this second, I'm not concerned about that. I'm just saying how will that strong acid create more of this and less of this? And that is the answer. Now, instead of trying to go back and forth and back and forth trying to figure that out, let me just fall back on my knowledge of buffers and say this is a buffer. I'm going to say the pH is the pKa. Now earlier, I'm going to show you that right down here. Earlier, before the buffer, before I added anything to the buffer, I had 0.17 moles of conjugate base, 0.23 moles of acid, and the pH would have been 5.03. But now that I have switched that a little bit, I brought this down by a tenth of a mole, brought this up by a tenth of a mole, and the ratio is different. Um, yeah. And the negative log of the Ka value, we knew the Ka from above. Didn't we? Negative log. Shoot, I better figure that out. I didn't write that down. You can do it. What's the negative log of 4.8 to negative 6? That's the pKa of that. And evidently, if I didn't make a mistake, it's 5.32-ish. Huh, interesting. I didn't do this calculation, but it is sometimes done, and it would be instructive, interesting perhaps. What if I added that that uh, 50 milliliters of 2 molar acid to straight up, uh, straight up volume, straight up amount of this buffer? Well, the pH would change quite a bit more than this. Here it just changed 0.4 of a pH unit, or actually 0.3 something of a pH unit from here, which is the straight up buffer to this situation after I'd add the HCl. Interesting. Or not. <laughs> a little confusing when you first see this. 
So you can ignore the stuff in the screen box if you want. That's just from a previous video on how to find the pH of a buffer. This stuff right here, and that's answering the question, how would I change my situation? If I added strong acid, it would add to this and go this way, or if I added a strong base, it would add to this and go this way. Hey, let's try one of those. Buffer holds 0.2 molarity of HA and 0.15 molarity of A minus salt conjugate base, resulting in a pH of 3.35 after the what is the pH after 0 0.015 moles of NaOH solid is added to this 0.5 liter volume? This will be a little trickier, but it's my last problem, my last question. Is that true? Oh, sorry about this. I was trying to check my side notes, make sure. Yep, that's the last one I have. All right, so what in the world is happening? I have HA, I have A minus. Let me write out an equation for that. Oh, I said, yeah, if I know, go back here, rewind. If I know the amount of acid in its conjugate base and the pH, shouldn't I be able to go to the henderson hasselbach equation? Or not even, just use that old-fashioned definition and, um, and find the Ka value. Now, I can imagine a way where you wouldn't have to find the Ka right away, but this might be the simplest. So they told me a pH, they told me the molarity of conjugate base to the acid, and I struggle through a little bit of algebra, get rid of the p function, tend to the negative x on both sides, and lo and behold, I have a Ka number. Now, I'm going to need that in just a second. Perhaps the easiest way to do this, to think about it, would be to say, is this too large? That's a little bit too, that's pretty good. Um, I have HA, I have A minus, and I'm going to add some NaOH to that. So again, I had a half a liter, and my molarity is 0.2 of, of, of weak acid. I had a half a liter, and its molarity was 0.15 molar of uh, conjugate base. And that comes out to 0.1 moles, liters, 0.1, yeah, that's right, 0.5, yeah, that's right. So the question is, when I add the NaOH to this mixture, will the NaOH react with this, or will the NaOH react with this? Well, you know OH- is a strong base, so it's going to want to react with the acid. So my, um, so yeah, so this base will react with the acid, creating less of this and more of this. Let's see, how much of the NaOH did it say it was going to add? Well, there's my equation. If I add strong base, it goes one way to take away, to consume some of that acid, the weak acid originally, creating more of the conjugate base. So originally I had 0.1 moles of weak acid, 0.075 moles of conjugate base, but now I'm adding um, 0.001 moles of strong base, and that brings this down by 0.001 moles. So this strong base reacts with the strong acid to go this way, creating more, 0.0015 mol moles more of the conjugate base. So 0.075 plus 0.0015 Five is 0 0.0765 moles, and this goes down a little bit. That's tricky chemistry right there, honestly, thinking about that strong base pushing less of this and more of this. Yeah, seriously, that is a little bit tricky. So, but now I can go ahead and finalize it and say, well, if I have 0 0.0985 moles of weak acid remaining, a little bit of it got consumed, as I added the strong base and my conjugate base increased a little bit from 0 0.075, 0 0.0765, and I just go back to the ratios. So I figured this from above, the pKa. Oh goodness, that's interesting. I found the Ka value, but I didn't even, didn't even need to find the Ka. All I really needed was the pKa. Yeah, cool. Anyways, the ratio is 0 0.0765. That is the A minus amount and the HA amount goes there, and lo and behold, pretty easy to find the pH of that one. Well, easy, is rel easy from this step, easy is a relative term. I don't know, I think buffers are often confusing. They can, they can confuse me, and if they can confuse me, they can certainly confuse you, so kudos. Thanks for watching. Good luck, see you in class.